<laughs> you know, I've been inspired to do some creative surging lately because there's a new accessory available for my Baby Lock Triumph. It's a hybrid table between the regular cover stitch table and the overlock table. And you can do some stuff with it that you couldn't do before. And while I was doing that, I was making some adjustments and I thought you might like to see whether using the table, the Triumph or not, how you can make adjustments to this machine. Even though it's good right after you thread it, you can do some creative stuff. So let's dive into how do I make some adjustments if I'm doing something a little bit outside the box. I'm Kathy. This is Sewing Tech Talk. Join me for some fun surging. Okay, so when you thread up your baby lock serger, there's really no super big adjustments that you have to make. You do have to set up the machine for the stitch that you want to do. And that's really kind of easy because your machine comes with a quick reference threading guide. So you pick the stitch that you want. It gives you a picture of what it looks like and you just follow the instructions. There's only a few things that you're going to set up. Because it has the thread delivery system, when you're doing overlock stitches, you only have to select a stitch selector, which is A, B, C, or D. I'm going to do a two thread flat lock wide, which means I need stitch selector A. And I want to adjust the other things that the chart says. It says the length is two to four. Well, let's see what we're at. I'm about two. I think that should be good. And then it says the width, the, the width of the stitch, because I'm doing a wide one, is 7.5. So there's only one 7.5 on the knob that does the width, so I've set it for that. The other thing on the chart, it says that I need to have the blade in the locked and down position. Check, I've done that. And it wants me to have the knife cover, which is the traditional <laughs> cover that I would use for an overlock stitch on the machine. But there's a new sheriff in town. This is the uh, traditional cover that you would use for an overlock because it has the area for that upper looper to come on up. So there's the other table that comes with the machine, and that is the cover or chain stitch table. It's a flat table, and that upper looper can't come up because it would hit the bottom of this. Well, here's the new <laughs> table which you can get for your machine. It has all the advantages of a regular cover chain stitch table because you can put the attachments here. We're going to talk about those in a bit. But I have this up here so that I can use my overlock stitches and use some of the attachments that I couldn't use before to get my overlock stitch. And I think it's pretty cool. So we're going to be attaching that one because I want to use a seam guide to help me get this two thread wide flat lock stitched just perfectly. The one thing I need to do is I need to engage my subsidiary looper, which is right here like that. And I know because it tells me in the chart, check, and now I just have to thread my machine. So to thread the machine, you're going to put the machine into threading. And it's quite a long distance here, which is great. So you need to pull a good length of thread, stick it into the threading port after you engage everything by just turning the handle on the right. Click. Now I'm going to put about a quarter inch into this threading port. I'm doing the lower looper. I know that because my chart says that's what I'm doing. Push the button and voila, here it is. Now, kind of a unique thread path for this two thread wide flat lock. I'm going to come down here and instead of going straight down to my upper looper, which is where I would normally go, I'm going to come over to the left and over and this thread's going to go through my needle. Now what's neat about the, <laughs> the Baby Lock Triumph is that it has air threading for the needles too. So I'm going to bring down <laughs> the threading guides. Now this one I kept long. This one I'm going to have a little bit shorter and I'm just going to clip that thread off and I just have to get it sort of kind of mostly close to the needle that I'm going to want to thread. So I'm going to stick it right down here pretty darn close and push the button. Oops! Don't let it go before you push the button. Just saying you got to be a little bit coordinated. And voila! Through the needle. Pretty neat. 
now I'm pretty much ready to stitch, except I have to put my new fun table on and set up my seam guide. Now for this flat log stitch, what you're going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch over the fold of the fabric and I need to just catch the very edge of that fabric so I have enough room when I open it up to have that flat log lie flat. I'm going to put my table on by just sliding it on here and closing it on up. One advantage of this table is I now have the ability to put attachments on, true, but I actually have also areas to hold my hands that I didn't have with this table. This would have just been airspace before. Now I have a lot more control because I had put my hands everywhere. So let's attach this pretty fun seam guide. It attaches through the holes on the table, and there's little white screws that came with your machine. I'm going to put it on there. Now I am going to adjust this so I'm just catching that edge of the fabric. So I keep a little piece of cardboard to use with my seam guide, and I'm going to put it underneath and move my seam guide over, and I'm going to put it so that when that needle comes down, I'm using the overlock needle one, which is the left side needle. And I'm going to put it just where I kind of want it to be. Move my seam guide over to where I think it's going to be okay. And then lock it on down. Now, I have this seam guide to really help me sew perfectly straight. Before, I really didn't have a very good visual of where to have the thread, I mean the fabric, go through. So, I do have these little marks which kind of help me and I can use little devices on the uh, foot and the needle plate, but I just like this seam guide, it really helps. So now, I'm going to take my fabric and depending on what you want to show on your on your two thread <laughs> wide flat lock, that's not easy to say, is you can either have the fabric right sides together or wrong sides together. I'm going to go with, hmm, let's see, let's go with right sides together so that I have not this regular stitching, but I have the little ladder on the back. You'll see what I mean. So I've folded my fabric and I'm going to place it under the machine. I like the, the, also I have the presser foot lever in the front so it's easy to adjust. Now I have to take the machine out of threading into serging. Now this Triumph will not stitch with either the, with either the presser foot not down or with this cover closed. Two kind of great safety features that really are kind of nice when you're sewing late and you kind of forget. So let's see if I've adjusted it right. It kind of looks pretty good. Let me kind of rock that needle down and see where I'm going to be. It looks a little bit like I'm grabbing too much. So I'm going to go a little bit to the left. Just a fraction. Remember, this is just a sample. And sew, sew a sample whenever you want to adjust your machine. So let's stitch. Let's see what I got. Oh, that looks pretty good. I think I'm going to change the stitch length just a little bit. It's real easy to get to right underneath the table. Remember, the only adjustments I made were the ones that I needed for the stitch and to set up my seam guide so I'm just catching that edge. Now let's see if you can kind of see. I'm going to hold it up before I open it up. And can you see, this doesn't look very attractive at all, does it? See how those stitches are way off to the side? And see how I grabbed just a little bit along in here? That's exactly what I wanted to do because I needed enough thread when I opened this up for it to lie nice and flat. Look at that. I have to be honest, before without the seam guide, sometimes these would be wider or narrower because it was hard for me to really judge that I was getting and biting the right amount of that fold. On the other side, you can use that stitch as well. Both of them are great. I just happen to think I want this one. Oh, I could put ribbon through here. I could put beads through here. I could do all kinds of things woven through that ladder side. Or 
I could use this side and it'd be really pretty too. So setting up the machine is pretty easy. The adjustments, you just follow the quick reference threading guide. If you want a little bit more detail, there's an inspiration guide available for all of the baby lock sergers that are like, um, the, well, just ask your retailer, go ahead and look on the website and Moore's will have everything on there that you need for the serger, the inspiration guides that you can get. There's one for the attachments and feet too. So I've set up for this. Now I'm going to do something a little bit crazy. I have my fun table. I can do overlock and I can use some of my attachments. So let me take this away, set it up for some attachments, and I'm gonna do something a little bit fancy that I've never done before. So now let's talk attachments and adjustments because there's all kinds of different combinations. Now, like I said, the baby lock serger is great. Just when you take it out, you get it ready, you're doing any kind of surging, then it's, it's pretty much good to go right after you thread it. But there's some special situations where you might be wanting to uh, manipulate the fabric, work on some extra heavy fabrics, uh, and you might want to make some adjustments. So it's good to know where those are. There's not too many that you have to make, but it's good to know where they are when you want to make them. So. I have the overlock table on the machine and I have one of the pretty exciting attachments that you can use with this table and it is the knit woven bias binder. But let's talk a little bit about the different attachments that manipulate the fabric before it gets to the foot and the needle. So there's lots of different ones available and of course they all do different things. So when I refer to an attachment, like I said, what that does is it manipulates the fabric before it gets to the foot or it makes uh, a manipulation of a fabric like a binding to fold around that edge. So everything is a, with an attachment, it's going to attach to the front of the foot and the fabric is going to be manipulated before it gets there. There's all kinds of different ones. Now in your handout, I talk about all the different kind of attachments that there are. When you get an attachment, there's always a handout within it, like a piece of paper, like a spec sheet that tells you how to use it. In the inspiration guide that's available for any of the machines, it talks about the different things that you can do with the machine and the attachments or the feet that work for it. You can also get a specialty uh, inspiration guide called a workbook that goes through the attachments and tells you specifically the different Different things that they're for because you know that might be a little bit different because they might do multiple things than you think they would so let's get dive into some some of these so now this is a a folder and you can see if you look at the attachment it's going to attach to the front of the table so here's the here's the traditional table and it's going to attach the front just like that with the little white screws now, if you look at it, you can kind of figure out what it's going to do. If you look at it, you can see that this is going to fold the fabric up and around. So the fold is going to be over the top of the fabric and you have an adjustment on it. You can go side to side, depending on how, where it attaches to the table here, and it can go back and forth because all of these attachments can work with the different feet. So you can see I can have, for example, the clear foot here and I can make sure I'm guiding everything so that I'm hitting just the edge of that fold as it comes over. Say you're doing the fold over a, um, a, and you just want to do the cover stitch and you want to be able to see exactly where that is. So here is the cover chain stitch foot. It will also work with this depending on where you adjust that at. So there's all kinds of different combinations of attachment and feet. So now this one is a double, a double fold. <laughs> like I said, you can look at the bottom of the foot and see. This is a single fold bias binder. What, is, what does that mean? If you look at the side here, you can see how it's going to fold the fabric over the top and it's going to lay that bottom flap fabric, just leave it flat. And this bottom edge is going to be covered by that cover stitch on the bottom. So the top is folded over and the bottom lies flat. I would use this maybe on a pair of curtains, something that would be lightweight that I wanted to have um, just, I wouldn't want to have that bulkiness of a double fold. 
Speaking of double fold, here's another one. Here's the traditional double fold bias binder. And when they say bias binder, they kind of mean it because this one works specifically well with bias strips, meaning a woven fabric that's cut on the bias. Because how this attachment works is it's going to go on the front of the machine just like this and the fabric's going to scoot straight in and be folded and be put directly on the top of that edge or around that edge and you can tell for example how it's going to work by the way this double this folds that edge over and over on the top and the bottom once again you can adjust it side to side and forward to back now, for the big kahuna of uh, double fold binders is the knit woven binder. And oh my gosh, look at this one. It looks like a spaceship, doesn't it? It's pretty fancy. How this works is this is copied from an industrial binder meaning it has more controls that you can use on it to get more specific, um, better results. And the fact is that the fabric comes from the side and then it turns before it goes and wraps around that edge. Why is that a big deal? Well, it controls the fabric more precisely. And because it's folding and turning as it goes around, it's going to be held easier and better to going across that edge. And you're not going to be able to slip as much. So it does more of the work for you. Additionally, it has more adjustments than in that other double fold binder. That's why it's suitable for knits. And the other one is more suitable for just wovens. You can use knits on the other one, but you eh, have to be a little bit more careful how you do it. So the fabric feeds through here and it folds around and it comes through here. The adjustments that you can make are, of course, side to side, but these two screws on the top mean you can adjust this little part right here where the fabric folds around. Why is that a big deal? Well, if you are uh, stitching it down with, say, a chain stitch, you want to catch the top, but you also want to catch the bottom as well. So you want to make sure that that bottom fold sticks out maybe a little bit more than that top one does. So you make sure that you nail it every time. So this one has a little bit more adjusting that you can do to it. And well, quite frankly, it gives you more, better results more consistently than the other one. So, but you do have to adjust it a little bit. And let's talk about the adjustments now that you can make with your serger. Now, a couple of adjustments I'm going to talk about work for any of the baby lock sergers. And there's one that's going to be specific to the Triumph. So now let's talk about doing something pretty fancy with my new overlock table, because in the past, when you've used the binders, you had to stick to this table right here and you really couldn't do any overlock functions because, well, quite frankly, it would hit the table. Now, like I said before, that doesn't happen. So now I can do a double fold binding. I'm going to use my very fancy binder and I'm going to put an overlock stitch over the top of it. But that means I have to make a couple adjustments because when I put this over this binding over that edge, I've really added a thicker fabric over the top of it. So what I'm going to do first and foremost is I'm going to adjust the pressure on my foot. Because that area that I'm going to be stitching is so much thicker on either side, what the machine's going to want to do is it's going to naturally want to kick that thick part over to the right. Now I can adjust my binder left and right to accommodate for that, but I don't want the machine to put so much pressure down. So on the side of your machine right here, there's a little knob. And what you can do is turn that knob counterclockwise to lighten the pressure on the foot. Now, if I was sewing some very fine, delicate fabrics, I might want a little bit more pressure to control to keep that fabric close to both of the feed dogs. Or maybe if I'm gathering, I want a little bit more pressure down there. So I would turn the knob clockwise and that would add a little bit more pressure to that foot. Don't forget, though, when you, for when you finish whatever you're doing, put it back to the middle, which is absolutely just normal. <laughs> it's the average amount of pressure that's set from the factory, but you can adjust it either way. Now there's another thing that's pretty important to know. When you're using your baby lock serger, 
it has that automatic thread delivery system. And what that means, it's literally going to measure the exact amount of fabric you need for that stitch. Now I'm doing an overlock stitch on my little fancy thing that I'm doing here. And what I'm doing is I'm going to do an overlock over the top of that bias binding. Whew, never could do that before, but I can now with this new overlock table. So what I need to remember though is I have, like I said, a lot more fabric there. So the machine's going to feel the pressure that is pushing down on that regular fabric. The part that's not, that has the binded, binding on the edge of it. And it's going to automatically adjust itself because that's what it does with the automatic thread delivery. It doesn't know I have this binding on the edge that I'm doing something kind of crazy with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust that amount that the machine's going to, the amount of thread that the machine's going to deliver. And I do that by adjusting this little knob right here. <laughs> Bet you didn't notice that knob before, but it's going to be important because what it does is it kind of overrides that thread delivery system a little bit to give you just a little bit more thread to cover a bulky thing or maybe a little bit less thread if you're kind of missing off the edge. So depending on whatever stitch you're doing and the fabric you're doing and the thread you've chosen, if you stitch a sample and you have a little bit of thread hanging off the edge, no problem. You can push that knob to the left or the plus to tighten up that thread and make it a little bit snug. If you want a little bit looser, you're coming around something big and bulky like this or maybe polar fleece, you can turn it a little bit to the right. But like I said, do a sample. It's probably going to be good from the get-go, but if it isn't, you do have overriding controls. Now I promised you there's something that the Triumph has that the other machines don't. And it has a speed control. That's a top speed kind of governor. What does that mean? That means, well, you know this serger goes at 1,500 stitches a minute. And I'm going to do something kind of fancy here. So I want to make sure that I can go slow and steady so I can get that precise stitching that I want. So the machine can, so the attachment can fold the fabric and I can guide everything exactly where I want it to be. So I have slowed it way down. The other option is that the other thing that comes with the Triumph is there is a knee lever and the knee lever lets me have all hands on deck and to lift and lower that presser foot if I do need to make some adjustments. So those are the three or four different things that you can do to make sure that your machine is set up and that you've adjusted it correctly. Don't forget when you get done set everything back to normal because that's normally going to work for just about everything. Now let me dive a little bit deeper into what I'm doing here. This crazy plan I've developed to do an overlock stitch over the top of a binding. Now I've set my machine up and let's talk about my setup of this knit woven bias binder. I have the two screws setting it up right here and what I've done is I have attached the open toe foot which is an optional accessory. It's not the one that comes with the machine. It's optional because it has a big opening right here and see these big red lines? That means that I can see exactly where my stitching, my needle is going to come down. Now I've adjusted the bias, the bias attachment a little bit to the left. I hope you can see that this is set up right in front of this needle right here but I'm going to be catching it with this one right here. Why? Because the machine's going to naturally want to kick it out to the right. Because Baby Lock can control everything, but they can't control physics. And something that's big and bulky is going to be want to push to the side. I've lightened up the pressure, but still, I've done a practice run and I see that this exactly works. Now, I want you to set up your stitch before you attach the binder because you can get back down here to the, to the width and the length and all that kind of fun stuff. Run a practice, and I did that. Here's my little practice right here so you can see kind of what it looks like. So what I did is I cut a piece of a, a batik in a, in a small strip that fits into the binder, and I have that overslug stitch going over the top of it. It adds a fun little extra something something to that binding. And I did some adjustments. You can see that I had a little bit too much fabric here when I put it through the binder. So what happens is I cut it just a little bit smaller and it worked just a little bit better. 
So cut some strips, make some adjustments, pass it through, and see if it works for you. In your handout, I have a little sheet that shows you all of my settings. But your settings might be slightly different depending on your fabric. Just remember, do a practice piece and get it set up if you're going to do something wacky like this. So now, let's take a look at this. I have this all set up. The fabric's going to feed right into here, the flat part of the fabric. And the binding is going to come straight through here, turn the corner like I said, and head out and be doubly folded over the, that edge. The nice thing about this binder is it has this like little swiggly tail at the end to, to control your fabric as it's being fed in. Now, you're kind of watching here, but you also have to make sure that this binding doesn't get all twisted up. And this really, really helps. I put it through there like that, and I put it down here. I have my binding here, so it flows nice and easily. Now, speaking of the width, you can see that mine is a little bit smaller than the width of this opening right here. When you cut fabric to be used as your binding, generally, it's going to want to fit exactly between those two edges, unless you don't want it to. So I found that a smaller, narrower piece is a little bit better for this technique. If I was binding, just putting it down with the cover stitch, I might have to go all the way from here to here. So just do a practice. Now the other thing I want to chat about is when I'm feeding it through, what I do is I make sure that this edge comes right along this part right here. If you look at the binder, you can see that it's really well designed. This area here brings up the fabric that's going to be bound, and it brings it up and shoots it right into the middle of that opening. Pretty neat design. But I always have to remember that I have a little bit of space right here, and I'm not going to push down here when I'm feeding my fabric. I'm going to push it here next to the binder. Little technique that you just want to keep in mind when you're pushing, when you're letting the fabric pull through. Remember, you're not pushing it, it's pulling it through. So let's see how this stitch works. What I've done is I've set up with a chain needle right here, and I have a three thread wide overlock going over the top of this binder. This is the eight millimeter or the smallest binder that's in the three different sizes of the knit woven binder. So <laughs> that three thread wide covers it just perfectly. So here it is. Now when I stitch, it's going to bring this fabric around, cover the edge, and go over the top. Now here's a sample of what I did, but I also made a little sample of my actual materials that I did from my little quilt that I made. You can see what I did is I actually, on the sewing machine, I just basted those two edges together because I don't want to think about making sure those two edges stay together when I'm feeding everything in. Let's see what this looks like. What I'm going to do is I'm going to feed through here and then I'm going to have this come right away and have the machine pull it through. Something you might want to keep in mind when you're doing any attachments or especially a binding is at first it it's kind of takes it a while to find its happy place. So when I'm feeding this through, I have a little bit of leader on the top edge right there that I'm going to trim off later. But that means that I can put this right here and feed everything through so that it's going to catch it and I'm just going to trim that off. So let's see how I do. You can see how I'm just going to bring this up right here, hold it here. Now remember, when I'm stitching, I'm going to hold it and I'm going to guide everything here to keep it close to that full, that part of the binder that's going to be the, um, the end, the, the edge. And you see how it just pulls it on in. Okay, it's starting to feed through. Now I'm going to get to the business end where I'm going to be stitching and this is going to be on my project, the real deal. This is just a practice, but on the real deal, I want to be just right. So the other thing that I do is I keep my hand right here to hold everything just over and pushed over to the edge so that I'm catching and covering that binding. See how it's nice that the machine's going nice and slow so I can keep everything under control? Because remember, I'm kind of watching this too. Whew. <laughs> 
it worked perfectly. Now it took me a couple minutes to set this up. What I wanted to also show you is that this table slides up and over when I get it all set up. I might be making some adjustments when I'm doing my sample piece. So what I do is I don't want to accidentally hit this and move the binder left or right because I've set it up in the perfect spot. So I just put a little piece of masking tape right there just to make sure that I remember I'm not going to move this left or right. And if I accidentally jiggle it or hit it, it's not going to move one way or the other. So let's finish this off and see what just a bound edge looks like with this technique. All right, let's see what I did. Isn't that kind of fun? Check it out. I have threads going over the top of my binding. Now, why is I think that kind of neat? Because sometimes when you do a bound edge like this, if you do the stitching kind of open, there might be pokies coming on out. But this binding really seals that edge. This would be a gorgeous hem or a really neat seam made on a coat or a lapel. Uh, and I can see doing some very lightweight organza or something in there to cover that edge, even to add just a little bit of sparkle. So there's the top and there's the back side. Look at how fun that is. And remember, this could have been a cover stitch that was big and wide and bold and beautiful. And I hope you can see there's some really fun, actually, thread play techniques, combinations. <laughs> it's almost endless. So thank you for staying with me. I hope you learned a little bit about some adjustments that you can make, some attachments that you can use. Remember, the handout goes through that. It shows you my settings and <laughs> just play because it's fun. Now we can use overlock stitches with some of the attachments that we couldn't do before. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with me today. I hope you had some inspiration and <laughs> I'll take it away, George. Thanks, Kathy. That was an amazing presentation. You know, April is National Surgery Month. And not only will you get our amazing deal on the Baby Lock Triumph, but Baby Lock will give you a $500 mail-in rebate. The most advanced feature on this is Revolutionaire. Now, uh, Baby Lock invented the air threading serger, but Revolutionaire is different. It has two separate motors that thread both the loopers with a burst of air, as well as all the needles with air and so it's so easy no longer do you have to struggle with that serger that is so difficult to use now this serger is actually up to eight threads you can use it in eight thread combinations and that gives you 87 different stitch combinations now why would i need to use that well first of all this serger is a four thread overlock and the overlock on this here you can sew on all different fabrics because of a patented auto thread delivery auto thread delivery they call it atd it actually has a device in the machine that forms the stitch with the perfect amount of thread now what that means is that there is no tension adjustments whatsoever now there are brands out there that have a so-called computerized automatic tensions well, there are too many combinations to give you every single setting. So for example, with this machine, all I do is select A, B, C, or D based on the type of sewing. So A would be my four thread overlock, like on this knit, which is just so easy and it has such good fabric control, but it also could be a wide stitch. Like, let's say I wanted to do a two thread with this thick thread. It is, there, there's no difference whether you have a thick thread or a thin thread or different weights of fabric. Uh, I can change it to B and that is for my three thread. And the three thread on all fabrics from cottons to stretchy fabrics to metallics. Speaking of metallics, I can work with metallic threads so easily. And so I, I don't even have to worry about it tangling because the machine brings it through perfectly. And as you see here on this metallic stretchy fabric, it's beautiful. In fact, it has such good fabric control that it actually uh, can do 
serger crochet as you see here with this metallic braid no problems now let's say i want to do a rolled edge this is what's so cool i can actually just turn a lever to rolled edge and it forms the stitch perfectly and regardless of the fabric or the thread it gives me that beautiful rolled edge all i have to do is select letter d and everything is perfect for me because it doesn't work with tension whatsoever I can actually select the wave and get this beautiful wave stitch. That is so amazing that I can use for decorations. Now, so far I've just described a four thread serger, but this is not only a four thread serger, but it's also a four thread cover hem machine. And so what is a cover hem machine? Now, first of all, this serger has a, a very large opening and beautiful, beautiful lighting. I can easily convert it to a cover hem and put this table on. And now a cover hem is that commercial grade of stitch that both hems and finishes all at the same time. I can do a triple cover hem, which is really good on very, very stretchy fabric. But then just by simply removing the needle, I can do a narrow cover hem, which is better on some of your real slinky fabrics like this metallic. I can also use it for woven fabrics. Now with woven fabric, uh, I want to use the wider stitch. So that is the cover hem. Now what's really exciting about this serger is that I can actually merge all this together. It has everything. So it has up to eight threads. And what other sergers don't have is your six, seven, and eight thread combination. So for example, let's say I want to sew very, very heavy fabric, okay? Well, first of all, the cutter on this uh, is a locking cutter, okay? That means that it has no flexibility on it. And what that means is that on this very, very thick fabric, it can cut it very thick. But I wanna use all eight threads. That is the widest four thread and the widest triple cover hem all together. And that's gonna give me amazing strength. I also can use the, uh, the eight thread with the cover hem for working with roughly. Now this has a single unit differential feed. And what that means is that it moves in a much uh, more consistent, longer uh, path, a stroke. And so gathering, okay, this is what's crazy. This serger can gather like you would not believe. The differential feed, I can adjust it to the, the maximum on this. And I can actually take, and this uh, is where I would use my, I love the, the knee lift. The knee lift gives me hands-free capability. And so I can actually put my uh, ruffler foot on here and I can lift up my foot without having any uh, need to hold onto the fabric. And then I can put my uh, fabric on the bottom uh, that I want to gather and then put a piece into the slot that I don't want to gather. And in one pass, I get this beautiful ruffle that can be used for a dust ruffle or pillow. It is truly, truly amazing. Now, I mentioned that this serger can work with decorative threads. Now, there's a lot of different weights of threads. It even has a special bypass where I can put a thread up to a four weight thread in it that no other serger has this capability. And this almost looks like a yarn. It is so amazing. That is why this serger is the most advanced and the easiest to use. So throw away that old closet serger, get the new Baby Lock Triumph. This will completely expand your creativity and cut your sewing time by half, making it much more efficient. So I think you agree, this is quite the amazing serger. It's more than a serger. It is an eight thread creation machine and it gives you so much capability to go beyond the next level in your sewing, quilting, and embellishment. Now, we have a very special buy on this machine. This has a regular retail value of $7,499. Right now, for a limited time, we have it on sale for $4,999. We're offering interest-free payments, as well as we're offering free shipping across the country. But wait, of course, there's more. We're gonna include this 165 page full color inspirational guide. This will give you step-by-step -step information to do 
everything, all 87 different stitch functions, and it's beautiful in detail. Now, this will also go, coincide with the 60-day membership to Love of Knowledge. This is a vault of different videos done by Babylock educators that will take you step by step through the basics as well as advanced techniques as well as using accessories. But that's not all. I have picked out some of my favorite accessories to add in addition with this. So first of all, we're going to include that ruffler. I love the way that ruffler works and this way you can do the ruffles, dust ruffles and you can do your pillows and it's amazing. I'm also including a piping foot and this will give you the ability to make the beautiful uh, piping on edges of pillows and other accents. The elastic foot not only works with elastic as you see here, but you can actually take a fine wire and do a rolled edge over it and make your own ribbon. I'm also including the beading foot so you can take beads and pearls and do some amazing embellishments as well as the belt loop foot. Now, how many belt loops do you want to make? Well, this is amazing what you can do with this. You can actually fold fabric and weave this together to make amazing fabric and different shapes all with the cover hem. Now, there's an amazing new product that is an extension table that allows you to use some of the cover hem accessories while surging. And so this table, I'm including this brand new table uh, that wasn't available for the Triumph before, as well as the special guide that will allow you to, to adjust to have such fine measurements to give you a wonderful seam guide. In addition, I'm adding this binder that can be used for quilting while surging or as a cover hem and you can do some beautiful decorative uh, functions with your eight thread. All this and a few extras are included in this special bonus. Not only will you get that amazing price on the Triumph and that bonus that's valued at $499, but Baby Lock will send you a $500 rebate. $500 more in addition to the savings. That's incredible, but don't wait. This deal will end shortly. We are running out of the bonus values, and of course, after April, the rebate is gone. So click on the link to order. Email us at customerservice at moors-so.com or call us at 1-800-865-9664. Bye for now.